Hey everyone, how you doing today? I thought I'd uh, show you an update on this uh, Creel Space Station. Uh, quite a bit's been done to it, and uh, it's it's coming along. Pretty happy about that. Uh, just kind of show you a bit of what it looks like fully textured finally. Well, I won't say finalized textured, but it, it does have a uh, full uh, coat of textures over the entire uh, hull and body of it now, at least. But I'm going to be tweaking those a little bit with some other materials in places. So you kind of get an idea what it looks like from like the back and underside and the uh, the side profiles of it, and things like that. Um, now, uh, one of the things that did change is the rear landing pads. Um, there was a totally different design here before. What I ended up doing, and maybe it was a little cheap, but I'm pretty happy about it. Um, I cut these, uh, obviously the uh, rear landing pads look an awful lot like these uh, front landing pads, um, except they're not quite, uh, they're bigger. Uh, so I scaled them up and I and I, uh, I basically I did this weird copy paste thing where I copied a front landing pad to the rear, uh, turned it around uh, 180 degrees, and then I uh, copied and modified it some more to make it a physically larger uh, landing pad. So it's uh, it's four blocks longer and two blocks wider currently, and I'm thinking about upscaling that one more time. Um, and that can be done pretty easily, really. Um, so I liked uh, the front landing pads a lot. I especially liked how the bottoms of them looked with the lights and everything like that. And I was like, well, why don't I just use that same design for the rear? And then I have that consistency uh, between the front and rear landing pads, um, except I just wanted the rear ones to be bigger. That was really my, my big thing. Um, and uh, they kind of are. Now, right now, what I'm not happy with on the rear landing pads is how I got them connected right now. Um, this isn't horrible, but it looks flimsy. So I'm thinking uh, about the, the mechanics here, and I might alter this a little bit where there's a uh, kind of a beam that comes out here and then attaches to some kind of joint here instead of this uh, thin angled uh, walk path that goes out to the uh, landing pad. So I'll, uh, I do want to work that out a little bit. I also rebuilt a lot of the side area, uh, this whole section here, from what was there to what is here now. It changed uh, quite a bit in a lot of uh, areas here. Um, it's a little more uh, detailed, I think. It fits together a little bit better. Um, but, you know, obviously before it was just the uh, kind of the rough blocks and expect changes along the way. I do that to every creation. I'll start out with one thing, and sometimes you're like, yeah, I don't know if I like that, and then... You know, give me another three, four hours with manipulating the body. And uh, it, it's usually, if you if you see something you don't like, I usually will be that way too. I, you know, I might not say something about it in the video, but uh, a lot of times I'll be like, I don't know about that area. You know, I want everything to be, I want everything to be right. So uh, here, I'm going to go to uh, night here, and we'll show you what I've got so far on the inside of this. And yeah, I already started on the inside, so pretty happy about that. Um, uh, it's dark in this area. This is obviously largely unfinished. I'll show you an area that is uh, closer to being finished. And this is usually what I start with with uh, just about every creation. That is getting the uh, the main production area uh, player stuff in, intact. And this is your uh, crafting room. Um, and there is a lot of stuff in this room. Now, I don't have LCDs or other little things in here yet to, uh, you know, fully tweak it out. I haven't done much with the flooring yet, and that's something, that's another area where I, where I want to check out alternative block materials for some flooring. Uh, but in this room area, you have uh, 10 320K storage, eight advanced constructors, uh, three furnaces hanging in the ceiling here in this contraption, um, some cargo boxes, two small constructors, two deconstructors, um, and then in the corners of the room you have uh, armor, locker, armor repair, and a fridge and food processor. Now I need a little more light in these places yet. Um, now one other thing that I got to install yet, I'm not done with this, is I've got a couple of these little doors over here on the sides of the crafting area. And what's going to happen, like when you go through this door, you'll go straight out this way, and it'll be a quick uh, exit to the uh, the base. And it'll be kind of probably a louver door right in this section here, too, letting you out on the other side. So if you wanted to get in and out right into the production area quickly from either side, you can, you'll can you be able to do that. Um, I thought that was just kind of neat. A little, uh, I wouldn't say hidden, but a little uh, thingy. Uh, could be useful, you know. Spent lots of times that I wanted to get out of a base quickly, and uh, 
Uh, obviously, you can fly right out the uh, the, the front hangar door too. But um, anyway, um, now one other area that uh, what I've been working on in the hangar is basically trying to set up the uh, the walls in the general framework, and I want to be trippy with everything. That's why I've got this odd curve pattern going on here and weird angles and places, and I'm trying to get some thingies in the ceiling and I got to work out the rest of this area and I, I you know some areas like this little roundy thing I, I'm not really liking right now um, on how that lines up to the other thing I think this might be a little too tall so I might have to uh, trim down the, the top area of the front of this place um, I thought about having uh, landing pads on the top over here but honestly it was going to be I mean I'm uh, like over here, you could technically have a landing pad that starts at this level here, up here, which isn't bad, but it was going to be really, really tight and probably hard to land stuff on it. And I thought about the same thing on the corners over here, but again, it was going to be kind of annoying and difficult to land stuff in those places. So I didn't really want to go through with that. Um, so instead, it doesn't have a gigantic landing uh, or hangar area, but it it, it kind of stretches out around the corners over here. And this door is bigger than a lot bigger than a 5x9 door that I normally have in um, things. So it kind of changes the uh, scaling and proportion of the hangar a little bit more. It's a little bit more roomy than you think, but it's, you know, if you take a, a, a space station like the uh, Solaris or something, it has a lot bigger hangar in the Solaris than this one does. Uh, but this still, I mean, between the uh, the two, uh, the four different landing pads in the hangar space, uh, you should have a lot of room to park stuff. Um, you know, SVs, HVs, uh, tiny CVs, uh, stuff like that. Um, now, one other area that I've been working on a little bit, and that is upstairs here. I was, um, this was a lot of testing, um, and I wanted to try to figure out how I want to try to go about hallways and lighting and things like that in here. Now I've got a little bit of room to work with, which is wonderful, especially for Creel. Um, and I'm trying to go with these odd shaped, roundest, semi round uh, corridors. Um, really, really trying to go uh, alien looking here um, as best as I can at least. So uh, I'm just trying to throw everything out the window. I don't want straight hallways. I don't want straight walls. I don't want, I want everything to be kind of flowing and curvy anywhere I can. Um, now some areas I'll obviously have to have straight walls, but um, uh, one I don't have to, I don't want to. So that's pretty much it. And then I've been playing around a little bit with alternative light, lighting ideas. Like you see the lighting in this room change after a few seconds. Um, and then I was kind of wondering if, it, for the sake of a POI, not, not for the player base, what if you uh, hit like a particular goal somewhere, maybe maybe that was hitting a switch in a certain room or something like that, and then it triggers something that actually physically changes the course and the lighting within the same place that you might have already been through. Uh, that was kind of a neat idea. Well, an idea I had. I don't know how easy that would be to execute, but this was kind of a test. Like, say you already came through here, and when you first came through here, uh, let's just say, for instance, I, I, th this won't be the case here, but um, let's say th there was a wall here. Um, and you came in here, and you went over this way, and you did something, and um, now the lighting's changed in this room, and now it went to this magenta color, and now there's an opening over here. Um, Stuff like that um, is, is kind of the idea. I don't want a confusing course. I don't want a, a player to be like, I have no idea what to do next. Um, I don't want one of those kind of things, but I do kind of want a course that you have to run through um, to uh, get to the core, to blow it up, and stuff like that. Um, I, haven't I haven't decided if I want to do an admin core for the PUI version of this or a regular core yet. Uh, regular core, I, I like the idea of you know having options if you want to just blow a wall out on the, uh, the the space station and enter that way, well, that is your choice. I don't really like to restrict choices uh, because that might be a choice I would pick in game. But I also want the players to run through the, the, the course and, you know, actually uh, play it like it was meant to be played. So it's, um, yeah, a, a little bit of a internal debate there. Um, but that's, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at today. Um, and uh, probably tonight, later on, I'll uh, try to uh, get a lot more done in this hangar area and then start to expand out to uh, other sections of here of this. 
Now there's a lot of room down below. Um, and I haven't decided where I want to put the farms, uh, the farm area yet either. I did want, you know, it's a space station. This, this would be your central hub if you're using it in that manner. I'm trying to keep everything very tight to this crafting area, but we'll just say for the sake of playing the game, this would probably be your central location right here. Uh, you're right next to your landing pads, uh, escape ways. Um, so I want the farms very close to here. And I, I was originally thinking about putting the farming section right back here, but then I was looking at the width of this room area, and I was like, man, that is, it's just like too tight. It's I wish I had more space. I can't really, especially if I come in at this floor without like raising you up higher, I won't be able to fit much in farm plots in this section. Now I could fit uh, quite a bit of that stuff up above. Um, and uh, that leads me to one last thing too. Um, on Again, for POIs, I'm not a big fan of elevators. I'm not even a big fan of elevators in regular uh, creations. I, you know, the, uh, the mechanics and stuff, it works, it's very convenient. It is a, uh, uh, definitely takes up a lot less space than trying to build up like uh, big staircases to go up and down a creation all over the place. Um, but I never did, uh, I did really like the, uh, the mechanics and how they worked. Um, and I especially don't like them much with a POI. Uh, it always runs that same thing, you know, where you're in a POI and then you go down an elevator and there's bad guys sitting at the bottom over here and then you're playing this elevator game and almost, it, and a whole lot of POIs. I won't say almost every POI. Um, there's a lot of different POIs out there, but... Um, so often, you know, you got your jetpack on, you flip upside down, you're shooting people through the elevator and stuff like that. That's like, that's not really the gameplay I want. I want to... Um, the best example of that would probably be um, a POI I made a while back. It was the the, the one scar POI. Um, let me uh, show you that in a minute. And basically, it uh, it did away with uh, the elevators for the most part um, and put in staircases. God, what do they call that? It's the scar. Uh, scar Fortress One. No, Scar Citadel. That's it. That's it. Um, so this one here, um, the course, uh, kind of like what I want to do with that, this one over here, uh, but this one had a course in it, and that course is basically where you, uh, where you get in here, and, uh, once you figure out, you kind of know where to go, like this main stairway, it's just a bunch of stairways, and there's side rooms off the staircase, but you follow this, this course around from here to here and it goes up but every single time there is a staircase and there's no elevator um, despite being such a tall building um, I like this though because it was a chorus you're running and gunning the whole time you're not you're not playing that weird elevator game of doing the quirkiness in the elevator and it was a pretty much a straight course run all the way up to get through this thing to the top and then you finally get out to the crane i don't know if you've ever seen this i've never actually seen my own pois any of my own pois and the gameplay i did in uh, reforge eden i know they exist but i've never been out to creel space or ever seen this poi anywhere either but i'm sure it's there um but uh yeah kind of the idea like like this so you follow a course all the way from the bottom of this poi up there's no elevators to uh screw with you um, there's multiple ways in, in the place, um, and there's other, uh, there's other little, like, secret things and stuff, too. So, yeah, it's kind of, kind of what I wanted for this one. So, I'll have to think about a course. Um, one last, one last little detail to this lower section here, um, besides maybe just a little bit getting to the, uh, the module bays out in these sections, uh, I kind of want to do the rest of it all ASIM. So, I'll turn off, like, symmetry, and I'll come up with different stuff for these different areas um but i did kind of want to keep uh, access to these bays pretty uniform and i might have to work out a method to get you there quicker uh because let's say you're over here and i want you to get and you want to go down to a module well right now i don't even know how to get there um you know <laughs> it's not really worked out but i'm i'm working on some areas that uh like shortcuts like if you want to get down to the module bay maybe there'll be a lot quicker way to do that and that's kind of some of the things i'm thinking about right now is the uh, uh is i got to get a lot of pathing work done before i can really start building out these room areas um 
figure out exactly how I want the pathing to be. Now, there is elevators in here, so that big spew about the elevators, and it's like, yeah, I got two giant elevators that go all the way to the top and the bottom. Well, for the player base, that that is wonderful. I mean, that'll get you to these different floors, and who knows, there might be a couple more floors here, and a floor on the top, and a bunch of stuff on the bottom. Um, that's pretty convenient for that scenario, but uh, maybe in the POI, I may even block the elevators off or damage them or make maybe an elevator only go up a little bit or just close it off entirely. And, 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 uh, but when I'm building this, I, have a, I need to put in an alternative way uh, using staircases or ramps or something like that to get from room to room from the bottom of the base to the top of the base. And that is kind of a goal when I'm, when I'm building this. So then with the layout for a POI, I think, would be a lot more effective. And then I could actually have that kind of more, uh, what I would consider a more uh, run and gun kind of fun scenario as opposed to elevator action. Um, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, 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 that video game. That's actually a really old video game. <laughs> wow. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's where I'm at right now with the uh, the station, and uh, I'm definitely open for uh, comments and suggestions. Any ideas? I've got some interior space on on here. I mean, there's not an incredible amount of interior space, but if anybody has a good idea for like a a room section or some weird themed room or a certain thing that's going on uh, for the sake of the POI, that's that's wonderful. Um, so, final things too. I, I, you know, two versions of the base. Uh, first one I'm building right now, which is going to be the uh, the player base. Um, I really want it to be set up well for, you know, despite being fairly big, um, that I want everything, you know, there. So it's it's very useful. It's going to cost you more than you could get with a different different uh, space station for the amount of uh, capabilities it has. Uh, but uh, I did want it to work well, at least, you know, um, obviously with all the Creel stuff costs more than it needs to, but it's always trying to do Creel stuff, you know, and that's that that's what they're about. So if you're into the uh, the weird look of the Creel and the dark purples and the weird texture lights and the crazy uh, architecture, um, that that that's kind of what they're all about. But I've never never tried to claim that they're somehow efficient. <laughs> Um, the more uh, aesthetics you put in something, usually the less efficient it is. So that's uh, basically it. Anyway, um, that's all I've got for today. I just wanted to show you this real quick and uh, see what you think. And uh, I'll keep on uh, uh, keep on hitting this thing. Um, and I still I still got to start another side project here. It'll probably happen this week. Probably in the next video, I'll do a quick update on whatever work I got done on this, and then maybe start a, uh, S a combat SV build. I've been trying to think of design ideas in my head, and I kind of wanted to cross, uh, do a bit of a crossover. Uh, could be either Imperial or a Merc, um, and uh, the idea would be to take some of the functionality of the DFA and kind of mix that with the Scar Glaive, and then but create something that has a different looking design uh, that might look more appropriate in Star Wars or something like that. I don't know. I, I got this weird design idea in my head. I can't really even describe it, but I'll try it and see what happens. Uh, so often, you know, I might think of uh, some weird shape in my head. Then it's like in practice, I start to build it and it changes into something totally different. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll, we will see where it goes. Anyway, y'all have yourself a good day. I will talk to you later.